Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, episode 46, entitled Some Golden Age Goodness, Part 1. This is going to be kind of an ongoing series within the main podcast. Every month I will, or every time there is one of the, these two titles uh, come out, I, that weekend's episode will consist of either a Star Girl, The Lost Children, 1 through 6, or... Justice Society of America, which I think is five issues. Um, I will uh, when I go to the, my notes section in a moment. When I start talking about it, I'll let you know. But every time one of those comes out, I will cover that and then something else, Golden Age tangent or Golden Age-ish. So for this week, it is Justice Society of America number one. Uh, the inner, uh, just kind of the real introduction to the new Huntress, but old Huntress. But we'll talk about that. And the first arc from Sandman's Mystery Theater, which is dropped on the app. I have it in one of those rare trades. Um, Tarantula. It is the first time I have read any Sandman Mystery Theater other than the Starman crossover. So it's new, it's fresh, and I got uh, opinions. But we're going to start with Justice Society number one and go from there. All right, so I've got my notes open. Sorry for you. It was just an instant for me. It was about five or ten minutes. Because I wanted to make sure I had everything all lined up for you guys and that. So here we go. Um, let's see. One, it's the start. I got the uh, the Mikhail J- Janin. I'm proud by Mikhail Janin. Uh, cover. Um, I wish I had gotten the Ordway cover. I like the Janin cover. I just kind of want, like, the it's the Ordway cover. So I wanted the Ordway cover. Um, so it's, but it's pretty good. I like it. It is, okay, what I thought from reading all the hype, not the hype, but, you know, what was coming out in the news uh, for, from DC was that this was set in the present and Helena was a member of the Justice Society. So I went, cool. But now, after reading um, New Golden Age 1, finding out, and then realizing this is a 12-issue miniseries, uh, it was something different, and it start and it, it the way it sets it up is that Helena is not born yet. Her parents aren't married yet. She is a future. She is from the future, and I air quotes the future. And it starts with three great panels. I think is great. Is thirty one years ago the death of the Waynes, and it's that classic Batman Year One under the streetlight of Bruce kneeling by his parents and Jojo running off. Thirteen years ago panel is Selena jumping out of her uh, apartment window with her friend. Um, calling her name, and then one year from now, you um, is Baby Elena and a kitten, a kitty, little black cat in a crib, and a a word word balloons from two different people. You can't tell Bruce, you can't tell anyone, Selena. If the Arkhams ever find out the child's existence, she'll never be safe. She will be after you help me kill them all. Um, so I don't know when that is. Um, and then 26 years from now, uh, you're introduced to Elena Kane. And she said that she took her mother's mask and her father's cape. Um, and she was a hero for a while before she joined the Justice Society. Um, you know, and there's a gap between her become- her father's death or becoming a hero. And she has recruited a new Justice Society, which consists of uh, good guys and bad guys. Um, so the lineup, the old members are Doc Fade and it is Khalid, uh, Helena and Karen, uh, Kara, Karen, Star, Power Girl, and then this motley group. And the art's wonderful in this. I really like it. I love it. There's a panel when it's been a, um, a two, and it's just two panels and it's, you know, the original members sitting around the table, like the cover of, um, All-Star Comics 3, and then below is in color, full color, the new lineup, m- minus Dr. Fate. So the lineup is, of uh, new ones, is the ghost gentleman Jim, the gentleman, gentleman ghost, uh, Jim Craddock, uh, Hawkman villain, Solomon Grundy, the king of zombies, as they say in this, the Harlequin son, Michael Maine, who is the, the son of uh, the original Harlequin, and he's a character design Wordway did for Infinity Inks that was never used. Uh, then you've got the second icicle, Cameron M- M- Kent, uh, um, the who would be with John Huston in his Justice Society as a hanger-on. 
Um, he's the new icicle. Then you have Kyle Knight, the son of Miss Two and uh, Jack Knight. Um, and he is the new Mist. And then you have Ruby, who is the daughter of... She's Ruby Sokoff, the daughter of Vladimir Sokoff, the Red Lantern, who is a, the communist version of the Green La of Alan Scott Green Lantern. Um, and something's happened, and Doc Fate's missing. Uh, there's a page at Ordway flashbacks to each of the villain, the new members who they're a legacy of. Like the first panel is Green Lantern versus Red Lantern. And then it's Starman, Jack, uh, Ted Knight chasing the mist through a veterans parade. Then you've got the icicle battling our, um, our man and Doc Fate. And then you've got the Harlequin. She's uh, holding Doiby's Dickles ca ca uh, hostage and is about to hit um, the gr Green Lantern with a, a loot. Uh, probably because it's wood. Uh, then you have um, a panel with Solomon Grundy um, fighting the Justice Society. Uh, membership is Wonder Woman. So which one? Flash, Green Lantern, Hawkman, Adam, and Johnny Thunder. And then there's ha Hawkman and Hawk Girl, uh, or Hawkman and Hawk Woman fighting Gentleman Jim Craddock. Um, the Gentleman Goes. Um, it's great. And then it moves on to Wayne Manor where... You know, Helena's telling her mom, I know what I'm doing. And the mom, and she goes, and also lets her mom know, I know you're following me. And then it cuts to the Justice Society. They found, uh, Khalid's body's been found. He'd been mummified. Looks like he's been mummified a thousand years. And they're in the museum. And then all of a sudden, Kara gets sick and is shot. And there is the red-headed man. I am not saying this is Peridergaton. I, it may be a legacy. It may be not him at all. And it's just um, a bait and switch. So I'm gonna I'm holding withholding judgment. Well, he shoots uh, he he speeds up uh, the kryptonite exposure on Karen, then shoots her, kills her. Then um, gentleman the gentleman goes lunges at him and he and he goes I'll tear your soul from your flesh. Uh, and then the redheaded man goes You'll do no such thing, Jim. Not when I can simply slide you backwards across your across your timeline, returning you to the land of the living. And the and she, gentleman goes is all of a sudden he's alive and he screams, I'm alive? You were, click, boom, and he gets shot in the head. Uh, and then he does, he kills off the rest of them. He, um, he causes Solomon Grundy to decay like leaves, you know, like vegetation does very quickly. Um, supposedly uh, the Harlequin's son um, had had a bad battle where he barely survived battling Wildcat. Well, the wounds have reopened and he bleeds out. Um, Icicle shat turns to ice and shatters. Uh, Ruby Sokoff power overwhelms her, and uh, the mist um, is aged to where he dies of dementia like his grandfather did. Uh, and as Helena tries to shoot the redheaded man with an arrow, she starts to age. At that point, um, her mom comes down and throws Dr. Manhattan snow globe, which she's inherited from Bruce. Uh, when Helena captures it, it throws her back through time, and you see 18 years from now, now being the present, Bruce's um, funeral, drawn by Jerry Ordway. It's absolutely stunning. Um, one year from now, Jay Garrick and his daughter Judy, 1976, Star Spangled Kid, uh, and the Super Squad flying over. It's the cover to All Star Comics 58, minus Robin. Uh, 1951. Uh, Red Lantern screaming, where's my daughter? And the final page is her unconscious with Johnny Thunder and the Thunderbolt looking down on her. Johnny going, where'd she come from? And Thunderbolt goes, uh, search me, Johnny. And then it, and underneath that it says, next, 1940. Um, I enjoyed this. I think it works really well. It is you have. I mean, do you have to read the Star Girl Summer Special and Star Girl One and New Golden Age Number One? Yes, but I would recommend you read them all anyway. So to me, it's it's a no-brainer because I found the Summer Special incredibly entertaining. I found Lost Children Number One very entertaining, and I found New Golden Age Number One intriguing. But I knew it was setting up Lost Children in this. I knew it was kind of like that Alpha or Omega bookend thing I think there's but there's no back end one and I read Flashpoint Beyond and absolutely loved it okay I really um, I did not like 
the the Joker, the bad who laughed or whatever, the Dark Materials crossover. Really, it was too long. Nothing happened that I cared about. They introduced new versions of everybody, and I didn't care about them. Um, but I did like Thomas Wayne joining Justice League Incarnate. I liked In- Infinite Frontier. I liked Millennium. I liked the first arc of Justice League um, that came out of that, uh, and then hate, disliked everything after it. Um, and I liked... Infinite Power was entertaining, and I like Justice League Incarnate. I have liked how these all, and Doomsday, I like Doomsday Clock. Okay, these are all things I have personally liked. So I'm getting more of what I like. Do I think this would be for other Justice Society readers? I think you'll enjoy it if you go in open-minded. And you may not, you know, because it's, I saw one review goes, um, I couldn't read the Spanish part, but they, when they, it was on a review site and they, they, they put a one sentence and I, I didn't need the translation because they put in English, this is not my justice society. And that may be the problem. What I really like about this, that this is a future Hel- Helena, that Batman and Catwoman are going to get married sometime in the future, have a daughter, and this is what's going to happen. That way... But now she's back in the past. So maybe her timeline disappears throughout this, which would be cliche. And then she gets to be in the universe and Batman, you know, and uh, Selena, does it change them from getting married? Does it do this? Does it do that? Um, who knows? But I kind of like the fact that they've, ta- they've created that, the Batman Catwoman child again. So we get Helena Kent again. We get Little Wayne, Lena Kent, Elena Wayne again. So I kind of like it. So I'm I'm all I'm all in. I think it's entertaining. I think Mikel Jen's art is beautiful. Uh, I loved uh, the work he's done with Tom King. He's also doing um, Danger Street, which I'm going to do another series of um, issues as they come out, as well as the first issue specials series, because I think that's that's interesting to me, and I'm hoping it's interesting to you. So, but that's I think it's pretty good. Uh, it, it for me, it's a good start, and let's see where it goes. All right, let's see where we go. I'm going to take a little pause, pull up my notes on Tarantula Sandman Mystery Theater, and we'll move on. All right, here we are at Sandman Mystery Theater, um, issues one through four that form the Tarantula um, storyline. Uh, first issue is uh, cover dated April 1993. Uh, the creative team, and I'll just do, I'll, I'll do it real quick. At issue one is Matt Wagner, Guy Davis, Penciler, and inker, colorist David Harang, John Costanza, letterer, uh, editors Matt Wagner and Shelley Bond. Um, and then in two, let's see if there's anybody different. Yes, that is the same creative team, except at some point Matt Wagner ceases being editor and uh, Karen Berger of Vertigo becomes, which makes sense. So that's... Um, there. It's, I, just, I don't know where to start with this. One, it was... Kind of what I expected. I knew kind of how the book was set up because I read the, you know, the crossover Starman. That it is more a detective fiction, more pulp. It's like Shadow or Republic Serials in a lot of ways. But it's basically um, this villain called the Tarantula. He don't know they are. They're in a hood. They have kidnapped one of Diane Belmont's. Diane Belmont is a character that if you read... Uh, Roy Thomas's Sandman Secret Origin in DC in Secret Origins and it's well I read it in the Tarantula Origin is the Tarantula you know the first adventure with Sandman in his cape and his purple costume his purple and yellow costume had a cape him and Tarantula thing and Diane Belmont who is Wesley Dodd's girlfriend and confidant and knows he is Sandman dies in that adventure and then James Robinson put in post crisis many years later when he was doing um, Starman, he wanted Wesley Dodd to have been a hero to Jack and someone he idolized because of kind of that serial esque nature to his hero, his type of hero, other than Jack's father, the guy, the flying guy in the cape, that he kind of liked the 30, uh, like, you know detective kind of aspect to Wesley Dodd's life. And um, Diane is alive. Uh, so that point changed. And I like that. This is them meeting. 
um, they meet for the first time in this. And this story takes place. Her father's the DA. And then there's a Lieutenant Burke and a commission. I forget the commissioner's name, and I'm not going to look at my notes. Um, but D D Detective Burke are all trying to figure this out. One of Diane's friends is kidnapped and then tortured in this basement by this hooded person, Tarantula. And Tarantula is, um, kidnaps another woman and tortures her to death in front of Diane's friend Jennifer, um, trying to get her to talk. And uh, through all this, you're meeting other people. You're meeting mobsters and bookkeepers. And you find out that, that, that there was this bootlegger that Wesley Dodd's father did business with, Albert Goldman, um, and his daughter uh, and son and wife. And it's all this stuff going on. And it, it's a well-paced four issues. I really, I thought, you know, the page count is, is it excessively high? Does this even give a page count on it here? Um, some of these sites do not. Um, uh, no, it doesn't. But it's, you know, it's the standard page count, I guess. And I'm not going to go recount them, but just, but it, there's so much stuff in it. There's narration, like you were watching, like um, a detective movie where you had the, the cheesy narration, which I like in some old 30s movies. I'm a fan of 30s detective movies. I like Humphrey Bogart movies. I love The Thin Man. Um, I love his the, the Rami Channel stuff the Bogey does. Uh, I like the Maltese Falcon. I love that stuff. I love it. And I love serials. I love it. So I really, really... This hit a lot of sweet spots. I think Guy's Davis, uh, Guy Davis's art is perfect for this book. And it looks like they rotate pencilers. Wagner, I like Wagner's Mage. I did like it. Um, this is, and I really enjoyed this. This is a well-written comic book. It is a well-written arc. It is, if they were putting these out every four issues as trades, I would have been buying them up if I knew better, if I'd been a smarter person back in the 90s and had more money. Uh, this is in my early, almost my, I was almost 30. But, you know, I've a lot of stuff going on. I guess I didn't buy, I just, I just didn't have money for stuff like this. And if I was buying comics, I was buying like, say, I was buying Starman and Justice Society. There was a lot of books coming out uh, that, that got my money. And I really wish I'd been reading this before. I've enjoyed this a lot. The, the pacing of the story, and I don't want to talk really any more about the story other than that what they're looking at, because I want you to read it, and there's a great twist, and it's got a good ending. It plants the end, ending. But if you like detective fiction, if you like Golden Age characters, I think this is this is a type of Golden Age. This is a type of th or late 30s, early 40s fiction that was in the pulp that wasn't superhero. And Wesley Dodd's original, you know, three-piece suit, fedora, gas mask, and sleep gun are very much of that age, and that's the type of hero he would have been. Less the superhero, you know, where he's, you know, when he meets the Spectre and Doc Fake, people with godlike powers, Green Lantern, The Flash. But he is just a detective in a suit, leaving little notes. It's great. The, the supporting cast is great. Wagner and Guy take time to create um, a great core cast. Every time they introduce you to another character in this, whether it be uh, Goldman's daughter, her, his son, his wife, uh, um, the people that are being interrogated by Burke. Burke, who's an awful racist, but he is, it, you know, he says something really off color and problematic, referring to his sister's husband, who is a person of color. But he is not portrayed as that's acceptable. He is the, the dodgy cop. He beats up, you know somebody to get information out of them. He is dodgy. He is the darker type of Wesley Dodd. They are running their investigation side by side uh, in parallel to one another. And he's, I'm looking forward to see if that grows. I like the judge who's a friend of Wesley's dad. Uh, I love Diane's dad and I love Diane. And it's just, they're all really fleshed out. It, it would make a great movie. This is like the great starter first draft script for a pretty good movie. This is, you could, I personally feel, if you f did, took this, and almost word for word translated it, added a little bit, and filmed it as a DC property, it would work. If you can capture the feel of 1938, and that era in New York, it would be amazing. 
it's that's how good I think the script is. I someone asked me what it's like is was more road to perdition than it was to Justice Society of America. It is that, and I'm a huge fan of Max Allen Collins' Road to Perdition. Oh, uh, and I like the movie version. It's not the greatest adaptation of a comic book, but it it works, and I really think it captures the flavor. This is very much that. So uh, go on the app if you had to, if you have the Ultra. It's on there. The whole run is on there. It's worth reading. I find reading on the app, I'm adapting to it. You know, I'm adapting to it. I kind of do it panel by panel uh, on on my phone. It's just easier for me, but I can do it on my laptop if I want to. But this is a great comic. I cannot uh, recommend it more. Uh, Justice Society of America, I recommend it highly. Um, I think you need to give this arc a chance, uh, and it's well worth it. So, folks, on Tuesday... Uh, which will be two days from now. I will do the next issue of uh, the next episode of My Legion Adventure, um, which is 328 and 329 of Adventure Comics. And then also Giant Size Defenders number two will be on Thursday. And then next week, a week from today, will be me and Ron talking um, the last four four or five issues of the Bronze Age Titans. Um, which was a fun conversation, many tangents, and I think you're going to enjoy, enjoy the heck out of it. All right, folks, I'm going to say goodbye. So until we're back, be safe, be smart, be kind, and read some Sandman comic books. Mm-hmm.